to another Collider Heroes interview. I am Amy Dallin. I'm Coy John Drew. And with us today is author and illustrator Kirk Scroggs. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. So you have made a new book that Coy and I both love called The Secret Spiral of Swamp Kid. Swamp Kid, that's right. Who is Swamp Kid? Swamp Kid is Russell Weinwright. He's an eighth grader. He lives in Homa, Louisiana, and he kind of has a similar affliction to Swamp Thing. He's got, he's like the ultimate outcast. He's got green skin. He's got moss for hair. He's got this giant tree trunk arm. He's got face tendrils. <laughs> so he's pretty much the ultimate middle school outcast. Like many of us felt extremely normal in yes, middle school. Yes, times 100. <laughs> My favorite thing about this book, and there's, there's many things I love, is how instantly likable he is and how instantly approachable it is. And, I, and a lot of that comes from the, the format of the book. I love that it's, you're in his world, like instantly. You're automatically like seeing the world through his view. Uh, how did that idea come about to write something in a journal, literally, from his worldview? Well, yeah, it was very important to me that it seemed like it was coming straight from the brain of an eighth grader and particularly my brain, which is pretty much an eighth grade brain. <laughs> so um, I just thought, what better way than to have it look like one of my actual, actual journals that I used to get in trouble for writing when I was supposed to be paying attention in class. Really? Teachers would confiscate them or, you know, send them home with my parents with a little note saying, you know, we're a little concerned about your son. And uh, yeah, I wanted it to look like a journal. Like it's, uh, it looks like it's written with whatever he has on hand, like a pencil, or if he has markers that day, or maybe he just has a, you know, a big ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to look like it was straight from the source. Yeah, I really enjoyed that there were scenes that had like the timestamp, and then it would be like a, a corner drawing because that that was middle school, junior high, high school. A lot of a lot yeah. of my childhood was making those choices. Um, was well, a lot of Mad, Mad Magazine in the in the borders, Absolutely. like yes. the, the little cartoons that would they would always have in the in the margins. Like, so so you were that off. kid all the time, and in, in like growing up, this is is this self reflective? Very yes. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly drawing monsters. Uh, it was always Halloween. In my brain. <laughs> it's a so, good way to live consistently. Yeah, so. now, the idea to make a new character, uh, was that something you'd always wanted to do? Were you a comic kid growing up? I was into the, like, I was into Mad Magazine first, like I said, and then uh, any kind of spooky comic, so like Tales from the Crypt or um, in relation to Swamp Thing, is uh, I loved Bernie Wrightson. Yes, the original had, 1970s Len Wein, Bernie Wrightson run. We've talked about a lot. We're yeah. huge Swamp Thing nerds. You must check it out if you haven't. How young were you getting those? Uh, I, well, at first, I got the um, the comic book adaptation of Creep Show, mm -hmm. which he did the art for, and so that's how I learned about him. And then I learned he did like um, heavy metal, the yeah. sequence in heavy metal, the movie, which is you know ultimate you know, nerdy kid movie. Yeah, it, not discovering kids that shouldn't be watching school, it. Yeah, discovering that middle school, <laughs> it's eye opening when you yes, uh, look back on the choices uh, I'll you say made. Eighth grade boy movie, <laughs> but he did a sequence with a with a World War II bomber. Yeah, where everyone on the plane gets shot except for one dude, and then all the others come out like these like tales from the crypt zombies like crawling for him and he's stuck on a bomber. So it was fantastic. So then I learned that he did you know the original swamp thing so i was like on board with that for sure because it's it, it's like the ultimate uh combination of an ec comics tale with like superman yeah so it's a neat hybrid i think superheroism in the swamp in a creature context and of course kids love monsters yeah, uh, yeah. and i feel sometimes i feel like there isn't enough monster content out there that like is accessible to kids so this middle yes. grade graphic novel i think is perfect for that can you tell us the story behind the project how did this come about well, DC sent out a list because uh, they were starting this new line of books for like middle grade books, basically. And they wanted uh, different, they were like looking for stuff that was already outside the box, which I really appreciated. So they basically just presented a list. Like we've got these 20 characters. People haven't really seen these characters in a while or we want to do something interesting with it. And you know, Swamp Thing just <laughs> stuck out. I was like, yes, I just threw away the list. Like Swamp Thing. <laughs> And uh, I sent them like within an hour. I'd sent, I think, a couple like, uh, or you know, like my cons, like three or four fake pages. I just scanned a notebook and doodled. So that was from minute one. This was your yes. approach. Yes. Yes. And I, apparently, from what I've heard, they liked it from minute one, but they couldn't tell me for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> so like my agent couldn't even like tell me that yeah, they loved the book. But uh, the hurry up and wait of so entertainment. I was starving. He's like wink, wink, wink. <laughs> Little did you know it was around the bend. Yeah. 
creatives, it could be the day. Just keep waiting. Things yes. are happening. <laughs> No, I love the creativity aspect. We were talking right before air about uh, being your own style of artist and leaning into your own work. How did you develop this specific, like, it's really fun. I love the comedic element of your art and the writing. How did you develop that style over time? It's basically just the way I've drawn since kindergarten. Just like <laughs> monsters first and then just crazy caricatures. And I love self-deprecating humor. It's just how I operate. So it's pretty much like I was telling you, it took me probably 20, 30 years to realize that that is my style. Yeah. Because I was always like looking at like Jim Lee's art or any of these great comic book artists. and like, guy, why can't I do that? And then, you know, someone sort of told me, it's like, you do, you do this, you do what you do. And it's silly and goofy and it's imperfect. So I just sort of embraced that as my style. And with Swamp Kid, I'm hoping, uh, especially with the format where it looks like it's drawn with pencils and pens and on notebook paper, I'm hoping kids will look at it and be inspired to uh, maybe just create their own stories with whatever they have on hand. Like tell their own stories, write their own journal, draw lots of monsters. That's what I'm shooting for. Uh, now the book is out. People can get it right now. Have yes. you had a chance yet to, to hear from anyone who's out there in the world with the book? I have heard from a lot of like nine-year-olds and yes, they've all given it the thumbs up. So that's, that's so like good. The, oh, that's amazing. Because while well, Corey and I might love it, that's not the yeah, point. Yeah, not the demographic, and I was still like, yay! Actually, it was digital, so I was like, yay! Uh, I really appreciate the fact that this is a mid-young book that skews so positive, because I, I feel like there's so much. We were kind of saying how there's not a lot of kid monster material, but I also feel like there's not a lot of positive kid material. A lot of the, the young adult uh, world is very like dystopian, and the world yeah. is very dark, and this is the opposite. Um, was that an intention when you when you decided to do Swamp Kid to make a very positive monster kid book? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to keep it like I mean it's got its darkness, but the darkness is totally like universal horror. Yeah, you know thrills and chills. I wanted to keep it uh, sort of grounded, based in in the world we live in, but you know sneak in some themes about uh, feeling comfortable in your own your own skin and and making friends, but just just not hammer the message too hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not my style. I'm not good at it. So. <laughs> this could be at a Scholastic Book Fair, but also be taught. I like that. I like that kids can want it and learn instead yeah, of yeah. being like, this is a lesson you're receiving. Yeah. And the dystopian things, I think it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> any movie been, theater, any summer. It's, I agree. Covered. <laughs> it's great to have a variety of material out there for kids. What do you hope happens? What do you think would, would be like the kid who grows up on this book? What do you hope they do? I hope they just uh, express their creativity as much as possible, whether it's doodling or, or maybe they, if they can't draw, maybe it's writing, just uh, express themselves. And that's, I don't know, that's my main goal. You have a one, some wonderful side stories about uh, friendship in this book, about a hero who starts out pretty lonely and sort of finds his group, yeah. even with some, some ups and downs <laughs> along the way. Uh, what was the story behind that supporting cast? Or was that something that came accidentally out of the story or like intentional in your planning for it? I just feel it's very important just to, for kids to even have just one close friend. And I, I, that's what I love about Charlotte in the book mm -hmm. is, you know, he might only have one really true close friend, but she's, she's got his back. And I feel like he, he does the same for her. So it's very important. And then with uh, Preston, he's a character that's introduced, like he could possibly be, you know, duplicitous. He's, he's <laughs> got a TMZ sort of thing <laughs> yeah. going on. Like, is he just trying to exploit Swamp Kid? But you know, ultimately, I think you, he realizes that he's judged him. They've each judged each other probably a little too quickly. And that's what middle school feels like. And I really liked that. Yeah. I, I, within five pages, was like, oh, the paranoia is there. I do remember this exact <laughs> feeling. Uh, was, was shaping the uh, educational aspect important uh, when you were going through? Because I, I, I love that within pages, it was talking about like what photosynthesis is. And like, yeah. you know, like behind you, like the chlorinated algae free. Yeah. There's a lot of science in this book. And, yeah. and that's something that I think modern comics are doing really well is giving kids knowledge while entertaining. Was that something you wanted to do with the book? It seemed just like uh, I had to do it because it's it's so gooey and gross and like <laughs> uh, it's all algae and moss and swamp and the bayou, and it just seemed like uh, and and uh, the the, the uh, doctor Alec, what's his last name? Uh, doctor Alec uh, Holland. Yes. I was gonna say Connor Sorry. Holland. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Um, 
Name yeah, the part. He's a many so yeah, it goes back to this uh, sci this uh, science is the core to it. And Charlotte is like she has. I think she basically has an electron microscope because she can just take any like green fluid and say yes, it's his DNA. I did. I love the like <laughs> yes, I've identified the compound. But like I was the middle school kid in science Olympiad, so Charlotte was very relatable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't that good, but we can all drink, <laughs> you know. I was the kid doing science experiments on himself, so I definitely identified. <laughs> like, I ate, like, you, did, the, did you guys do the thing where you made a pickle glow? A what? Like, we, a what? We, we hooked up a bunch of those, like, nine volt batteries to a pickle and it glows because of all the oh acid in it. But then I, like, took a bite of that pickle and it was, I was that kid, so I definitely identified with his life choices. Don't be like me in middle school, kids. Learn from, <laughs> learn from, not at. Uh, you we, had a more fun science class than I had. We were like <laughs> dissecting earthworms. and <laughs> I don't think they did it after I did that. I think I was the last round of like, the kid ate the pickle. Uh, now, when you were developing this book, um, DC making this, this young adult style book, how hands-on was the publisher? Were you guys like sending notes? Were they were like, just send us the book when it's done? I've got two great editors, uh, Alex and Diego. and But they, from the get-go, DC has been like, this is your project. Just Amazing. do what you do. And then occasionally they'll, they'll come back with a note saying, nah, can't do that. <laughs> so, too far. That doesn't, or, you know, it's more like a character thing. Like, that doesn't seem like something Charlotte would do or this or that. But they've been very, like, hands off and very supportive. That's yeah. amazing. How early on did you know that the, the actual Swamp Thing would be a part of the storyline? Uh, from the get-go, this is going to be a Swamp Thing book as well as a Swamp Kid book. I and did then, love the, the in-character reference to, like, his adventures, which are kind of R-rated. Yes, <laughs> yes. The in-universe joke of, like, but that's over there. Yeah. Well, that was when I heard they were making a show that was, like, really violent. I was like, oh, I better put, throw in a little <laughs> joke. I'm sure many parents appreciate the caveat of, like, no, 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 no. Yes. We don't need to see his adventures. Speaking of, are you, uh, like, now that you're in the world of comics, are you reading anything now you'd recommend for people? Is there anything else in the, in the medium you're enjoying? My husband is more into graphic novels, so he's like, like been lending me his library, and I really like Paper Girls. Oh, oh yes. it's so good. Yeah, and I, I know they've got a new volume of that out, so I've got to like get on that. And I started Black Science, which is really good. These both aren't really for kids, Black Science especially, but. <laughs> Um, I but think they both have adventures, uh, elements of adventure and science. I think yeah, and a lot over. of like uh, dimensional warping which seems to be a common theme. <laughs> yeah, Paper Girls is dense. Paper Girls has a lot of science that I, I read yeah. through Paper Girls one through five twice, and then I was like, oh, okay, now it's okay. I got this. <laughs> totally fine. But the characters are very clear and accessible, and that's a different take, of course, on the uh, middle school years, but viewed from sort of a later perspective, yeah. um, where this sort of gets at like some of the scariness, but also the, the kind of joy that can exist in that time. I can't believe I'm saying that about middle school, which was not <laughs> my favorite period of life. But maybe if I had had books like this, I would feel differently. See, for me, middle school was great, but the ninth grade, for some reason, was my middle school. It was, yeah. like, it was weird. Like, huh. So I didn't identify with this at first, and then I thought about, wait a minute, ninth grade was basically my rough time. Interesting. It works yeah. Yeah, it, it's a big transition people. year. I could totally see that being as yeah. traumatic as like yeah. fifth grade. <laughs> now, is there anything now that you've written Swamp Kid and you've gotten your own original character out there? Is there anyone else you want to write? Is there any other like you want to play in that box? Well, we are working on a, a new DC story called We Found a Monster. Yes, that sounds great. And it's going to be monster chocked full, like just uh, nonstop monsters. It's about two kids who find a monster, and it's a nice monster but they have to protect it from society who's scared of monsters. And then uh, throughout the book, you're slowly gonna realize that uh, through, through the, the eyes of one of the kids, that the other kid, this is not their first time at the rodeo with monsters. <laughs> and there's a whole like, like uh, giant uh, layer of monsters lurking beneath the town. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that we're living monsters. in a time where I'm like so dragons excited. and monsters and all the things that I wanted to read are coming back. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's now's the time. Like I only had Dinotopia. That was it. <laughs> oh, now yeah. we have like How to Train Your Dragon every two years. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a new world. It really is. So and one of the cool things is uh, we're going to, we're get, some of these monsters are going to be like plucked from the DC archives, like characters who you've kind of see come and go. They've never been like the star of the show, just like these weird side characters that you've seen in the past and uh, they're excellent and quirky little characters so we're going to bring them into the fold 
That's perfect. I love side canon. That's amazing. Yeah. The, the, the tiny little characters hiding in the archives are something that make comic book worlds so much fun. So yeah. this sounds completely awesome. I, when, we, when we found out about Swamp Kid, and I didn't know the Swamp Thing, because I, I just dove in, and I'm a Swamp Thing guy. I love the character, so it was really cool. Because now there'll be an entire generation of kids that will discover Swamp Thing so much sooner. Because this book <laughs> yeah, is yeah. so accessible that it's like, you don't wait to. It's hard to introduce thing. this character to kids. Yeah. It's, it's challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think, like like you, probably, the, the 70s stuff being pure classic monster stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like you, I've, I imagine that's the be the next best step. Uh, you probably just wait a little longer before you get to the Alan Moore stuff. Yeah, wait till like, you know, <laughs> jun junior year or something for the Alan Moore. <laughs> when they discover the show, discover Alan Moore simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> but he's still over there. So in the world of, of like the, the comedy and, and, and entertainment, but also education. I feel like that's kind of the best gateway for comics uh, is this exact kind of parallel. Um, when you're talking to these nine-year-olds, are you finding that they're like reading other things or like what? I, I'm curious what a nine-year-old review is. What have the kids been saying? Uh, well, we got one today that was really good. She was just like, she loved the science aspect of it, uh, especially the frog. Yeah. The specimen number two. <laughs> yeah. Specimen number two is a very delightful part of the book that you will love. He's like a tree frog that is also afflicted with uh, the swamp <laughs> thing, swamp kid, whatever is going on. <laughs> so he has like, you know, some blooms and fly, uh, leaves growing out of his back. And he's always uh, producing specimen number one. That's a running lowbrow joke. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it totally yeah, works. Runs through the book. Some things are just funny. Now, the, the coloring on this is also really specific and ties to, like, the pencil type stuff. Was that a conversation you had with the colorist when you were going through, or was that all, like, one process? I just did everything, and then um, they pretty much, you know, would adjust the colors, I guess, to make sure it looks like pencil versus pen, you know, not try to make the pencil look like pen. So that was probably a challenge for them. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it translates to one of the most unique things about this whole, like, the world of the, the young adult books is, like, uh, like Kimmy Garcia's uh, book, um, the... Teen Raven. Titans Raven. Raven. Yeah, Raven. Yeah. I love the use of color, where it's a lot of black and white, and then the color flourishes. This book does something kind of the opposite, where it's color flourishes on the, the stark white paper, so everything pops yeah. like it's intended. Um, was that something that DC talked about when you were developing the book? They definitely have been, like... Um Especially when they see something like... Uh, occasionally, there'll be a page where um, specimen number two has has sprayed the page of specimen number mm -hmm. one. Like yeah. And so it's like frog, green frog pee, or there's ketchup, <laughs> or you know, there's like a page that's burned. They are like, uh, I want more of this. That's their main note. More, <laughs> more of this. I, I will say, as reader feedback, those parts are great because they really make this format stand out. Uh, yeah, so it's like a you. tactile. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next time we'll have like gross stuff on the pages, right? Yes. <laughs> it was just short of scratch. Yeah, sniff, text, which I appreciate. Actual texture. <laughs> Crusty well, ketchup. What's the most fun part of working on these? Uh, Pretty much uh, the whole experience has been fun because I think any author illustrator secretly wants to draw or write a comic Aww. for DC, especially. <laughs> so it's just been like a dream come true. So, but anytime I got to, to play around with the, the parts you're talking about, like mix it up with the, the media I was using or have a stain appear, or that was just like heaven. The doodles <laughs> like a, a on playground. the hole punched bits of the pages were a particular <laughs> favorite for me. It's very nostalgic. It's very informational. I think it's a great gateway for kids into comics. It, it's everything I want a kid to like comics about. So thank oh, you so much. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. You can get The Secret Spiral of Swamp Kid right now. It is by Kirk Scroggs. Thank you so much for joining us today on Collider thank Heroes. Thank you. This has been a blast. I can't wait to rediscover monsters from DC <laughs> past. I'm so in. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you.